The GMC Canyon has always been the go-to choice for those of us who crave a luxurious pickup truck experience in a more compact package. However, even though the GMC Canyon has a lot to offer in terms of luxury, we have to say that it pales in comparison to its rivals in many other key segments. The Canyon's shortcomings are so severe that we would honestly advise against buying it altogether. To prove our point, we've coupled six reasons why you should not buy the GMC Canyon. Number 6. The price tag is simply way too high. One of the first dilemmas you'll encounter when shopping for a GMC Canyon will undoubtedly be its price tag. This pickup truck, as well-equipped and well-built as it is, is simply way too pricey for what it is. The starting price of the GMC Canyon is only a hair under $40,000, making it easily the most expensive pickup truck currently on offer, neck and neck with the Jeep Gladiator, which is anyways more of a novelty vehicle than an actual workhorse pickup truck. To put it in perspective, the Toyota Tacoma starts from around $32,000, whereas the recently redesigned Ford Ranger costs just over $34,000. Both of these vehicles offer more modern tech, higher grade of desirability, and much better resale value. And it's not like you'll be getting a lot of stuff for the money either. The base elevation trim will come with rear-wheel drive standard, as well as a relatively under-equipped interior. Sure, the quality will be pretty decent, especially compared to its rivals, but then again, you'll be paying around $6,000 more on average compared to its direct rivals, which honestly isn't worth it. Furthermore, the canyon's twin brother, the Chevrolet Colorado, starts at a whopping $7,000 less, which just further amplifies the absurdity of GMC's pricing decision. And this is just the base model. A well-kitted-out canyon will cost you upwards of $50,000, whereas the fully optioned-out version of the pickup truck clocks at around $70,000. Could you imagine paying 70 grand for a mid-sized pickup truck? You could buy a well-equipped Ram 1500 with the money, which is the pinnacle of luxury in the world of trucks, and the Canyon cannot even hold a candle to the Ram 1500 in that regard. Number 5. The interior is not that luxurious. Speaking of luxury, we're sad to say that you don't get what you pay for in the luxury department when buying a GMC Canyon. Now sure, the interior of the Canyon is better than any other mid-sized pickup truck, however the line between them isn't that big. Now, credit where credit is due, the interior layout is fantastic. Everything is very tactile, everything feels very traditional, and the fact that you have a physical gear lever as well as physical climate controls and buttons is a great thing to see. However, the quality of the interior is a bit iffy, especially on the lower end models. The elevation, for example, doesn't have a faux leather varnished dashboard. Instead, you get the same old black slabs of plastic that you'd find in every other pickup truck in this segment. Sure, they're a bit more soft-touch plastics, however, nothing to piss your pants about. Furthermore, you don't even get leather seats as standard, nor do you get a fully digital display. You have to pay a premium for that, which is a running theme with the Canyon. You have to pay for extra if you expect it to be a luxurious experience. That's a bit much because it already costs a heck of a lot more than its rivals. Wouldn't you agree? Now, the higher trim levels, such as the Denali trim, do get quite a bit of goodies, such as a faux leather varnish dashboard with wood or textured plastic trim pieces. However, that'll set you some odd $53,000, which is maniacal. Number 4. The Ride is Very Firm now, the interior could probably be forgiven, however, what we simply cannot forgive is the ride quality. When you pay 50 grand for a luxurious pickup truck, the least you could expect from it is to be pleasant and comfortable, right? Wrong. You see, GM had a great idea to make their luxurious mid-size pickup truck exorbitantly firm. This has been done because of the Canyon's extremely high ride height. GMC had focused more on creating a properly capable off-road pickup that's also a good general-purpose pickup truck, which is never good news for those of us who tend to drive on the road more often than not. You see, to keep the Canyon composed on the road, even with its tall ride height, GMC had to stiffen it up, and although it does corner pretty well, going over bumps and potholes is far from pleasant. Now, we have to say that we understand this decision, as it has become quite the trend for automakers to make their cars firmer than they need to be. However, we still would have loved it if the Canyon defied this trend. Number 3. The Lackluster Choice of Powertrains Another key thing that keeps the Canyon down is its choice of powertrains, or rather, lack thereof. You see, at a time when most of its competitors offer some radical powertrain, the Canyon kept playing it safe. 
For example, the Ford Ranger offers both an inline 4 and a V6 engine, the Toyota Tacoma has a fantastic hybrid on offer, and even the Nissan Frontier has a weird engine choice in the form of an old yet reliable naturally aspirated V6, a rare sight these days. On the other hand, the Canyon has only one engine on offer, a 2.7-liter turbo 4. How mind-numbingly boring is that? Now, sure, it has 310 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque, which makes the Canyon solidly capable. However, you still get a whiny four-banger under the hood, which simply does not like to be revved high. Furthermore, even though it's a four-cylinder, it eats up quite a bit of gasoline because it's quite a large turbocharged unit. Do with it whatever you want, but you won't be able to do more than 20 mpg, which is pretty bad, honestly. Overall, the truck would have benefited from either a V6 engine or a hybrid drivetrain offered as an option. Number 2. There's not a lot of cabin space. One other issue that the truck has been known for is the general lack of interior space. Now sure, the front seats are pretty good, and we have to say that we rather like the way the entire front row is configured. It offers a lot of space and everything is very comfortable and thoughtfully made. The problem arises when sitting in the back. You see, the rear bench of the Canyon is very lackluster. First of all, you don't get a lot of knee room, which for a car that has 131 inches of wheelbase length, simply won't cut it. Sure, two adults of average height will slide in okay at the back, however, the comfort levels aren't ideal to say the least. Furthermore, the rear seats aren't particularly well designed either. The seating angle is weird, as you sit very upright, which isn't particularly relaxing. Furthermore, the seat padding is noticeably different compared to the front seats, making the rear seats a hard surface to sit on. They're better than the Toyota Tacoma, however, that's like being proud that your seats are softer than sitting on a plank. Number 1. The Chevrolet Colorado Exists Honestly, we could turn a blind eye to the previously mentioned issues. No vehicle is perfect, and the Canyon, as flawed as it is, still offers quite a bit of good stuff. However, what we simply cannot go over is the fact that you can buy the same truck for almost $7,000 less. The Chevrolet Colorado is identical to the GMC Canyon. Starting from the exterior, both trucks look identical to one another except for the front end. Both trucks also have very similar off-road performance, as both have monster truck-like ground clearance. The interior of these trucks is also practically identical. Now, sure, you'll have quite a bit more scratchy plastics with the Chevy Colorado. However, for a fourth of the price, we can't complain. You'll still be getting great ergonomics and thoughtful interior design, and you'll also be getting the same technology, all for much less money. The only visual difference you'll see is the passenger vent, which is circular on the Colorado compared to a more traditional shape found in the Canyon. The only real difference you'll see is the fact that the lesser equipped Chevrolet Colorado variations have a less potent engine. This engine produces less than 240 horsepower, which if we're being completely honest is abysmal. It makes the Colorado the least powerful midsize pickup truck currently on offer. However, thankfully, once you go for the Z71 trim or higher, you'll get this engine as standard. And with the Z71, you'll also be getting most of the stuff that you'd get with the GMC Canyon Denali for around $7,000 less, making the Canyon a real ripoff for the money. The truth is this, the GMC Canyon would have been worth it if it weren't just a glorified trim lineup of the Chevy Colorado. A shame. Truly a shame. GMC would have had it in the bag if they just made the Canyon a bit more comfort-oriented or maybe a bit more unique. Thanks for watching and see you next time.